Hey guys, so you guys are totally rocking it out in our Coach Basics group, Grow and Go Wild. But I just wanted to give you guys a little tip. Um, right now where we are in our training, we're kind of talking about um, how to get to know people, how to add customers and coaches to your team, how to open yourself for business, start your event, start your challenge group. And a very, very big part of that, a very big part of people trusting you and feeling like you can help them to succeed is going to be what we call in sales and in Beachbody form. And what form means is it's, it's a mnemonic device. It's F O R M and it stands for family, occupation, recreation, and then message. So what that means when you're getting to know someone, especially on Facebook, it's so easy. You, you're so blessed that you have Facebook to show you what's going on with this person. So if you think that, you know, somebody's into fitness and they have three kids and they just had a baby three months ago and, um, you know, their husband, it looks like maybe their husband's not around or something. You already have kind of some, some background knowledge to be able to say, Hey, How's everything going? You know, or hey, how did it go with the birth of your new baby? How exciting? How are things going? And really already start talking about the F, their family. Um, and why that's so good is because people love to talk about themselves. They love to talk about what's going on in their life. And if you don't think that, it is very true. People love to talk about themselves. Um, they love to talk about the milestones they're going through or the things their family is going through. Okay, so make sure to bring that up first. So when I talk about someone's family, I usually am like, oh my gosh, you've got these three kids are so precious. Like, what are their names? Like, you know, are they in school? Do they stay at home with you? And a lot of times those lead to other questions. Like somebody might say, oh no, my kids don't stay home with me. I work from like 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. And so does my husband. And that leads you to occupation. A really great reason why we want to know about occupation is because we want to know how much time do these people have. Your occupation is what's going to take you away the most from your free time or the time that you're doing what you want to do. Even if you're a stay-at-home mom or if you're a parent or if you're a stay-at-home, if you work from home, that those hours that you're working is still going to take you away. For instance, I work from home, but I'm sitting here doing videos and talking to my coaches and challengers and meeting you guys and I haven't worked out yet today. So that's going to take me away from it. So if it was someone like me who works from home or is a stay-at-home mom, which is a huge job, by the way, anyone thinks that's not a job, it's probably the hardest job ever. Um, that stay-at-home mom or even somebody who works, it's like, okay, so you probably don't have a lot of time to get your fitness in. And if it's somebody that you can see is already following a fitness and health routine, you can say, God, how do you do it? You know, you work 10 hours a day, like, Tell me more about yourself. Another thing to note is that we want to understand what they need and what they want by asking them questions. If you're talking more than they're talking, they won the conversation. They're going to get bored. They're going to get turned off. You're probably going to seem salesy. You want to ask them questions to get information about them and let them talk. Otherwise, we're, you're, you're nowhere. You don't know how to help them. Okay? So I usually will say something like, oh, okay, so... Um, so your husband's a firefighter. Wow, that's amazing. Like how heroic. Does he love it? You know, and sometimes people will say, no, not really. He did love it at first, but it's really odd hours. We just had a baby. It's really hard for, you know, for him to be home. You know, there's another clue when you're talking about occupation and people bring up that they don't love their job or that, you know, it's a hindrance for them right now, but they need it for the money. That's a great thing to keep in the back of your mind when you're later bringing up coaching. Maybe this someone is an awesome challenger and rocks your challenge group. You can say, hey, have you ever thought about coaching? My upline coach did it and she ended up bringing her husband home and then he works on her business or he's been able to work you know, somewhere else that he really enjoys it and he's not had to work those odd hours anymore. Or, you know, so that's why occupation is really important to talk about. Even somebody that says they love their job, like let's say, somebody's in sales and they're like, oh, I love my job. I would never want another job. Dig into that. Why do you love your job? What is it that you love about your job? I thought I loved my job, but what I loved was kind of like the praise and the pat on the back that I got for doing a good job. I didn't bring me joy. It didn't make me happy. I also loved that I was making good money, you know, but if I would have known, well, you can make this kind of money doing something you actually do love, you know, then that's something that I would have thought of. I never thought of that before. So just ask people these more questions. So family occupation is great and their occupation and their spouse's occupation. Um, 
The other thing is recreation. Like, what do you guys like to do for fun? You know, even if they live in your area, a good thing to say is like, hey, what do you do with your kids in the area? I'm always looking for something fun to do with my son. Or, hey, what do you and your husband do on a date night? I'm always looking for fun stuff to do in the area or something like that. But, or if you've seen them on their Facebook page, you can say, hey, I, I see that you guys like love boating. Do you have your own boat? That's amazing. Like, where do you guys take it out? Or whatever. They don't have to live in your area. Or, oh my gosh, you guys seem to be involved in like so many extracurricular sports. Do you coach that? You know, try to get an idea of what they're doing. I talked to a coach not long ago that just for fun, she was a fitness instructor. She's taught Zumba. I would have never known that if I didn't ask. But once we started talking, I was like, hey, you're already an instructor. Did you know that what I'm doing will give you like a solid routine that you can do in your home 30 minutes a day and really lose some weight? And you'll already have this network of being an instructor to where you can talk to all these other people and kind of pay it forward to them. Have you ever thought about making money in fitness in another way or something like that? You know, so make sure that you're asking them those things. So family, occupation, recreation. And then once you know so much about this person in those three areas, and they'll usually go into different areas, my family and this and that. And well, it's funny you mentioned my husband. We're not going through a really hard time right now. I think we're about to get a divorce. You know, and those are ways that you can be there for that person. It's it's very odd for somebody from high school or college that you haven't talked to him forever to really strike up a conversation. And, and this is a really big point, too. A lot of coaches don't talk about this. When I do that and I strike up a conversation that deeply with somebody on that that's a potential coach or challenger, I have something in my heart that, like, connects me to them, you know? So it's like, it's not just like, I want to get this information because I really want you to join my challenge group. It's not. It's, I want to know information about them because I want to know how to help them. But also, like, there's some people on my team that are like, I'm about to get divorced. This is the scariest thing for me. And actually working out is taking my mind off of it and making me feel like I've got some, you know, vitality back and my health back and those kinds of things. So a lot of those things are going to bring you really close to those people. I've, I've created like serious friendships from this and it's because I want to know these people. I don't want to just think of them as a number or a challenger or a coach. And if you do think of them that way, you're not going to grow your team. You're not because it's, it's like you don't care. Like you need to care about people. Like people always say in sales, like, Oh, I'm a people person. I'm not a people person. I have to work at it. I have to be the thing that's like, or I have to be the person that's like, Okay, so tell me about that. So that's kind of out of my comfort zone. I'm not just naturally like I want to sit here and have a gab fest all day. But once I push myself out of my comfort zone, I grow my community and I grow people who be, have become my really good friends because I do ask those questions and we have vulnerability there and we trust each other and we're able to talk about things that maybe they can't talk about with their best friend or their parent or their husband, you know? So um, I think it's really important to really growing your own self to be asking these questions. So family, occupation, recreation, and then the M is for once you've done all of that, you present your message. And your message, once you've talked to these people, is going to change. Like if somebody says, you know what, I got laid off six months ago and I am strapped for cash and I have my daughter and I want to put her back in daycare, but I really don't have the money and, you know, that kind of thing. Maybe it's best to offer this business opportunity to them. You know, maybe it's best to say, You've told me that you drank Shakeology for the last month or that you've had it before and it changed your life and health. Why not pay that forward? Within a week, you could make $100 and not have to pay for your product. You could do that every single week and you could make $400, $500 in a month. That's not atypical. I mean, that's very normal, you know? So um, that's something that it's like if we can, can help them in that way, maybe that's what they need. You know, if somebody's talking about how they're strapped for cash and um, you know, they're, they got laid off and they don't have a job. I'm not going to go awesome. You want to work out? <laughs> That's just not, it doesn't really add up. And some people you're going to hear their story and maybe you don't have a solution for them at that time. You know, maybe it's just not the right time. And you can say, you know what? It doesn't sound like it's the right time. I would love to share this with you, but maybe at another time when it's better for you. Okay. But we do not present our message until we know what kind of message to present. You know, maybe it's, Oh my gosh, you, this person is like in a sorority still or goes back to work on sorority rush and, you know, loves the product already. And it's like, you should totally be a coach. 
could present this to your sorority. You guys could all do this as a group and you could bam, build a team in no time. You know, so um, I would be thinking about those things. So when you're talking to people, guys, make sure that you get to know about their family, get to know about what they do for work, what they do for fun, and then present the message that makes sense to present as you're building your friendship. Okay, guys, so remember to form, F-O-R-M, remember to form, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye.